Hi everyone, it's Sloan Rhodes. Welcome to your Spiritual Self Mastery class, Ego and Heart, for the week of September 2nd, 2018. We are officially in September, rapidly approaching fall, and my birthday. <laughs> no, September baby. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so today I think I'm going to get a card from the Shocker Reading Cards by Rochelle Sharman as the overarching theme. And then as I do every week, I'm going to get one card at the position of what our heart, or what our ego might try to distract us with based on the overarching energy that our heart asks that we explore further and what we can expect regardless. And I couldn't decide what deck to use, but I just finally decided on the Animal Tarot by Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine. I just, uh, I love animals so much, so uh, I haven't used this deck in a while. It's kind of a playful deck. Last week was kind of intense in terms of the reading, so... Uh, I wanted to use something a bit more playful <laughs> this week. All right, let's go ahead and get started. This is for all astrological signs. This is a spiritual self-mastery class. So regardless of what your astrological sign is, um, you will find some connection here to uh, what you are working on personally. Oh, I just want to remind everyone too, or in case you didn't know, I, I extended my summer sale for my online courses through the end of September 3rd. Uh, originally I was ending September 1st, but I forgot it was Labor Day, so I extended it for Labor Day. Uh, the code is summer sale. There's a code, there's a link here as well as below, and it's 50% off. It's half off all of my online courses. So if you are interested in developing your intuition more and working more directly, let's say, through the use of tarot and oracle cards um, with your guides and angels, there are some great courses. There's a How to Read Oracle Course for Beginners, as well as the Intermediate Advanced Course, Three Pillars of Intuition, a Methodology for Reading Oracle and Tarot Cards. So the methodology can be used not just with reading cards, but in all areas of your life. So I, I really, you know, it's a very powerful course, and there's also a course on reading crystals. So if you're interested or if you're on the fence, I have extended the sale through the end of September 3rd. And it is unlikely that I will be offering such a savings for a while. So um, if you're on the fence, you might want to take advantage of it. If not, that's fine too. <laughs> okay, here we go. Clarity and grounding. So I'll show you this card first. All right, so we, the overarching theme is clarity, number 25, number 7. And then we have grounding under the deck, number four. So, I mean, absolutely for sure you have been, <laughs> I'm sorry, all my crystals, um, grounding yourself in the truth of who you are more and more. You know, so many times we go through these changes where we feel like things are just seem out of control or we can't keep up with the changes that are happening seemingly outside of ourselves, you know, in the external world. But whenever there's sort of great tumult, uh, tumultuous energy around us is always happening within us as well. So you've been grounding yourself so that you can manifest more clearly uh, who you are based on your understanding of how events and circumstances around you and within you are giving you greater clarity. You know, they're, they're occurring in order for you to define and redefine and refine your values, your feelings, your vibrations, your relationships, all of this. And now you're getting greater clarity. And sometimes it's, it takes a while, you know. Um, and the, but the grounding that you have been doing, you know, number four, creating something very stable for yourself as you gain greater clarity. Lovely energy. Um, again, not always easy energy. Because what occurs is when you are uh, growing spiritually, awakening, uh, spiritually, gaining greater consciousness and clarity, you begin to hold more light, right, in your physical body. And as you hold more light, it can become very, it can feel very unstable, and we can have symptoms of detox and this kind of thing. But as you hold that, more, that light for longer, it becomes more the new familiar, let's say, how you ground yourself in it. So each and every time that you're able to 
hold a higher vibrational thought or sustain an activity that feels healthier to you or a dialogue that feels healthier. The longer that you can hold the vibration of it or the frequency of it, the more you ground yourself in it, you know? So it's not just about the length of time as well, but the, the, frequent, the frequency or the consistency with which you do it. You know, so you're holding it longer. So this is how you ground yourself in the newer frequencies, the, the higher frequencies. The, you know, I use energy, frequency, vibration. They're all you know, synonymous here. That's the grounding that you're doing. It's the grounding, the integration, the holding it longer, more often. And when you do that, you gain greater clarity. All right, so let's see. And the symptoms of that can feel fatiguing, again, it's a detoxing kind of thing, because you're burning off uh, older paradigmatic schema, <laughs> let's say. Not to mention the denser energies. So sometimes that fatigue, uh, that lethargy, uh, the, the illness, the sickness, is part of the it's part of the grounding you know you have to slow down and integrate that's all part of the grounding that you've been doing so it's really nice it doesn't always feel good it's not always easy but you're doing beautiful work around it we all are all right so what can we expect to look forward to in terms of the ego what might the ego try to distract us with there's a hard acid we explore further regardless okay here we go the world so the ego may try to distract us with the world the Shetland sheepdog in this deck the hard asset we explore further the balance card in reverse zebra and what we can expect to look forward to regardless is the king of spring in the reverse here it's the lion so there may be a leo individual or a fire sign uh, fire sign sagittarius or aries who's involved um, or prominent during this week so we're working on greater clarity right we have the clarity card Again, uh, clarity comes with, uh, in this deck, in this situation, in this week, um, it may, I feel like, I feel like it's not so much that it's taking a long time. I feel like it's during the week. I feel like it's been a long integration in order to get, gain clarity. So I feel like even though it's number seven, I don't feel like the seven is a slowing down this week. I feel like it's just been this sort of long progressional energy of integration, grounding, and now you have greater clarity, which is really, really nice. And so the ego may try to distract us with this beautiful Shetland sheepdog, <laughs> the world. So, you know, when we have the world card in the upright, we have a successful conclusion. We have a, um, a bumping up to a new level, right? Everything's been integrated. You've learned your lessons and you're at this new level. You have completed the cycle. And it's a beautiful time for the ego to come in and be like, aren't you amazing? <laughs> you did it all through your own hard work. You deserve this. You know, it can come in in terms of um, our pride, our lack of humility, this kind of energy. So for some of you, that may be the case. You know, we do have this king of, of uh, spring in the reverse, you know, very, uh, like, you know, the king of spring is not someone who's humble and well, I mean, he can be humble even in the upright, but in general, the King of Spring is extremely self-confident, charismatic individual, but especially in the reverse, uh, the King of Spring doesn't always give credit <laughs> for those around. Uh, the King of Spring likes to be in the spotlight, but doesn't like to do any of the hard work and doesn't want to uh, give credit where credit's due to others. So this is why I say with the world card, you're, you know, your ego may be like, yes, you know, 
it's all me. I've done it all myself. And, you know, in truth, you're being asked to have clarity about where you have um, worked hard, of course, but where you can also see yourself um, as one aspect of a greater whole. This idea of integration is what, you know, I've talked about here. And we also have it here with the balance card in reverse. You know, with the balance card in reverse, we have a lack of integration, an inability to integrate, an inability to compromise here in many ways. Um, and the heart asks that we explore that further. So, you know, it's not all about you <laughs> here. Uh, you've done good work. You are at this place of completion, absolutely. But remember, the good work you've already grounded yourself in, is, and that is that you are more than your incarnation, that you are part of a larger whole. Um, now, the ego can also come in here for some of you. Um, you know, I'm completing this cycle successfully, but I don't know where I'm going next. Right? We have the clarity here. I can't see it yet. And if I can't see it, um, how am I supposed to get there? And you lose steam and you, you can lash out at others here. Again, it's a, you know, it's a general reading, and the ego does come in in different ways based on our own triggers. So be aware of it. But the, you know, the overarching theme of clarity, um, something you've been working on and grounding yourself in, it, you may get distracted by the the completion of something here. And the heart asks that you explore further the temperance card, the balance card, in, in the reverse. Where are you? Um, shying away from integration? Where are you not integrating these lessons that you have so successfully been working upon? Where can you explore them more? Where can you bring them out more? Where can you um, be kind to yourself and recognize where there's still that little part of yourself that doesn't want to um, compromise, that doesn't want to uh, not be in the spotlight, that doesn't want all the credit, you know? The ego, when it's viewed in this way of the inner child through the inner child, you know, I'm using the inner child and the ego um, as one and the same here. The inner child doesn't want to share, you know, doesn't, the inner child doesn't want to say, That's, this person helped me. The inner child wants to say, yes, I did it all on my own. It's just me. I don't want to give to someone else and I don't want to, I don't want to share my goods. <laughs> You know, it's all me, me, me. I don't know why it's coming in this way, but it is. But you've been working hard to integrate, you know, so and ground yourself in the truth of who you are. And the heart says, all right, so where do I still want to um, hold my own, stay apart from others without integrating into the fold? You know, the zebra, uh, stands out but it still manages to integrate with all the other animals on the savanna it still manages to be part of the the biosphere the environment it's not just doing its own thing yes it's unique yes you're unique as we all are but we're all part of something greater, something, something bigger, and you're getting great, greater clarity on this, and you've been grounding yourself more in this. Again, there may be a fire sign who's prominent, or it could be you, of course, but you know, for some of you, the Leo energy is maybe prominent with the lion here. Um, but it could also be a Sagittarius or an Aries individual, but either way, it is in the reverse, and the king of spring in the reverse can be very flaky, uh, doesn't want to actually take responsibility um, for anything, tries to slough off work, um, but take credit, you know, this kind of thing. And, and so it's important this week that you really be able to see that within self and within, within others, because it's all part of this integration. You know, the heart, the heart asks that you explore the balance card in the reverse, not out of uh, self-judgment or a flagellation, but out of exploration. You know, where can I fit in more? Where can I take what I have 
successfully completed knowing that I've worked hard, knowing that I'm bumping up, knowing that I have an opportunity here to move forward into a new level, to a new path. And where can I fit it into society? Knowing that I'm unique, but I'm not doing it all on my own. And you're wanting clarity, you're, you know, you, you're, you're wanting clarity of thought, clarity of vision, and you're wanting others to see you clearly as well. And you're seeing others clearly as well. But if you want others to see you clearly, you have to see yourself clearly. <laughs> if you want others to be clear with you, not only do you have to be clear with yourself and what you want and what your intentions are, but you have to be clear with others. People will respond to you in the way that you, the more clear you are with others, the more that they will respond to you in a very clear and definitive way. Let's put it that way. So there's a lot of messages here. Um, you know, the, the ego in terms of the world energy as you know, one of the first things that came to mind was this idea that, you know, you've done it all in your, all by yourself <laughs> and that you're done now with that. Well, remember that you're not done ever. You're all, as long as you're drawing breath, you're always growing and learning and on a new path on some, some part of your exploration of self. So, um, celebrate endings, um, but don't fear beginnings, you know? Clarity of thought, clarity of vision, but clarity of spirit as well. You know, you, as I mentioned, this idea of, of holding more light, holding more truth or clarity. Uh, as you do that for longer and more often, for longer periods of time and more often, you gain that, that clarity. You gain that clarity of, of spirit, you know. And the heart says, all right, so where is there some imbalance? Where can you integrate more? Where can you be more moderate in your approaches, in the way that you express yourself? Where can you be a bit more compromising, less self-judgmental? Where can you explore um, your unique self without the fear and the fight back that you have to do it um, against others or in opposition to something else. And the King of Spring in the reverse, uh, you know, just kind of general, kind of a, a week where there may be some flakiness, uh, some, uh, you know, charismatic promisings that fall flat or where do you follow people who are bright and shiny, but there's not a lot of substance? You're getting clarity on that. You know, the ego as well. You know, I'm sitting pretty here. Look how pretty this, this dog looks. And the ego says, I'm sitting pretty. I don't need to do anything. And the heart says, all right, you're sitting pretty, but where can you, where can you create some greater integration so that you're not somehow separate from the rest of the, the group, all the other plants and animals on the savannah, as I mentioned. It's nice to be sitting pretty. It's nice to have the completion. It's nice to have the successful ending and the bumping up. But where can you give back? And where can you be more compromising, more moderate? More, more humble. All right, I think that's all I want to say. It's kind of an interesting reading. Um, monitor. <laughs> you know, uh, your moderation. Look for opportunities to integrate successfully. Look for opportunities where you are trying to integrate things that can't be integrated 
and where you can say, all right, my heart is recognizing with greater clarity that this is not a situation that blends well. You know, with the, with the balance card in reverse, the heart says, all right, I see you trying to integrate, trying to create um, a more moderate approach here, but where are things, some things just not fitting? And it's okay to say goodbye <laughs> to an energy that's flaky, that's fluffy, that's superficial, that holds great promise but no substance. The heart says, where can you recognize that it can never be blended? You know, you're bumping up here. The ego says, yes, I'm bumping up. And gets all excited like it's all you. But remember, it's not just all you. You're meant to explore other aspects of your gifts and your opportunities in conjunction with others. There's that expression, I think I have it right, it's uh, something like that. There but for the grace of God go I. And I feel like that with this. Like, yeah, you're bumping up, but, you know, don't get too excited. Uh, it's not just about you, you know. Be humble, be, you know, have some humility here. Be grateful and appreciative. And the heart says, where can I integrate more and where can I recognize compassionately, but in a way that takes care of self, where things don't integrate well. And where can I gently let them go, or gently turn away from them, and move more in a direction of greater clarity, where I'm able to integrate more of the lessons I've learned through this journey I've been on. So, okay, <laughs> that's it. I hope that you found that helpful. I wish you much love and a wonderful week, and I will see you uh, next week.